Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the season two finale of All Games, No Masters, the show where we play uh, GMless TTRPGs. We are very proud to be part of Saving Throw Show's Exploration Society, and we want to welcome each and every one of you explorers as well. Um, before we talk, uh, do all of our announcements, I just want to announce my awesome cast, uh, starting with the illustrious Amanda. Oh, hey. Um, I am Amanda Powers. Uh, hello. And um, then I would like to introduce my good, good friend, Randy. Hey, I'm Randy Alvarenga. Glad you're, you're here. I'm here. I'm probably in chat. Hey, guys. <laughs> and last but almost certainly not least, I want to introduce the man who ruined my life. Ah! We have Amanda to thank for these shirts, by the way. Thank you, Amanda. <laughs> but I'd like to introduce Max Isaacson. Hi, everybody. Max Isaacson here. Life ruiner. T-shirt. Denizen. <laughs> he has so, so nice many T-shirts with his face on it. Season this two. isn't even the first one. It's not, but it is currently my favorite. Probably not the 10th one, if I'm going to be honest with you. I, I do so want to be very clear about the fact that I don't even, I know that Amanda got us these shirts, but I also know that there are other people who have these shirts, and I don't know who, <laughs> and I don't know how many. Um, uh, uh, don't tell me. It's fine. I <laughs> I just want to see them in the wild, uh, like like coyotes or mountain lions. Uh, and if you I'm want very... one, you can try to get in contact with Amanda or me, and we'll, we'll, we'll see about that. Maybe it's a thing. Maybe it's a thing. Hey. <laughs> I can name. I can name us. so many. Get, get in touch sure. with me. Get in touch with me, and I'll I'll I'll, I'll work with Amanda. I'll buy it. <laughs> Amanda fucked. has become an involuntary an involuntary. I sure me. <laughs> I, I changed it to me. I am I only t -shirt ha champion. Listen, I only have so much time in the world. Okay. Well, uh, Amanda, I don't know if you know what you've done, but you've just turned Randy into a captain of industry. He's now going to be a, yeah a, a merch baron. <laughs> I am, I, I don't know, I'm accomplishing all kinds of things while just legit sitting on my couch. <laughs> you know what? Live in the dream and you could do Woo! it too. We are aiming for $250 per episode and or 15 new subs or Patreon pledges. Uh, hitting $250 allows us to pay this amazing cast and you want to pay them. They're all lovely. Um, and keep content like this on the air. Even if you can't afford to back us, please spread the word uh hi, tell everybody you know grandmother i mean god if you believe in him whoever you want tell them about our show um and uh remember uh you can save uh 10 percent off at Die Hard Dice using the code Saving Throw Show at checkout. Make sure to use the command exclamation point D H D I C E uh, in chat for links and info. Uh, you can also order our friend Critical Bards Dice, get your 10% off of those, and do the whole double dipping of helping friends thing. It's super cool. And for everyone who is watching us on YouTube, thank you. We really appreciate it. Make sure you do all of the wonderful things you're supposed to do on YouTube, like, you know, ring the bell so you don't miss any notifications about when we post stuff, uh, leaving us really nice and polite and sweet comments where I am not misgendered, uh, all kinds of stuff like that. Um, sorry, that was, that was, you know what? Sometimes YouTube is YouTube. Anyways, uh, lastly, please consider joining our Patreon now and be a part of the new Exploration Society. Your support comes with many rewards and like special pins, swag, merch, uh, one page adventures written by the people right here uh, on our crew and be part of the, uh, of the Exploration Society by joining right now. Uh, we also wanna thank Roll20 for their help in making the season possible. Okay, with all of that in hand, uh, we all discussed for quite some time what we were going to do for our final game of the season. Um, and we settled on Beak, Feather, and Bone, um, which was um, uh, a choice we all came to together. Um, but Randy, who has played this game before, so kindly agreed to be our facilitator tonight. So he is going to help us get started and set up for the game. So I toss it to you, my friend. All right. So, uh... 
Hey everybody, Beak, Feather, and Bone is actually a really cool game. It's called a map labeling game. And so to start with, I'd love to do, just tell you one thing that tonight we're all going to be playing a different faction in this city, Kacha Kacha, uh, filled with Kinku uh, or Ravenfolk, Ravenfolk. Uh, that, so they've been known as Kinku or Tingu or Ravenfolk, but in this setting, they have really cool art and this book is really great. But what we'll be doing is going around and building out our factions and, at, and how they control the map over time. So uh, this says, starting with an unlabeled city map, players are assigned community roles before taking turns. You're not building a city. You're merely fleshing out each building's role in the community. And so that's where the beak, feather, and bone come in. But we'll we'll touch on that in a moment. So what's really important to play this game is an understanding, one, that this isn't your typical RPG, like I have a character, you have a character kind of game. You know, on uh, All Games No Masters, we like to change it up. We like to play uh, a lot of different things. And this time we're playing factions you know? And uh, the things you need to play the game are a stack of note cards uh, for your buildings, some writing utensils, some colored pencils, a copy of this beautifully drawn map. Well, you'll see it in the Roll20 in a moment. And then some playing cards as well, uh, a standard deck of cards. And so... We're just gonna go through the beginning setup of this. And, and what that means is as a group, Aki, Amanda, Max, and I, we need to choose a seat of power in this city. What that means, what that building is, we aren't planning it yet, but we choose it from the map. So Dom, take us away. Dom. Um, yeah, I mean, it's on the, like, oh. to the, the roll map. 20 map. I see yes. it. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. No, I was just, you know, setting it up for that. <laughs> it took me like two seconds to understand what was happening. All right. Okay. So it can be any building here, but they have a few. Like, but I think we can choose ourselves because we're adults. <laughs> are we, though? <laughs> but are we? I mean, there are a number of very fresh buildings on this map. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of liking... Okay, uh, I'm going to do a ping here so you can see. I'm kind of liking this building. Like, I know it's not actually a building. It looks like there's, like, a train car coming out of it. Maybe it's, like, a mine or something. Yeah. But Or maybe oh, yeah. it's, like, a, a Citadel-type situation where they just have a trolley that goes back and forth between, like, the two buildings. Like, we can kind of assign whatever attributes we want to this this building, I can't, can't see we? what you're pinging. What's it's at the it? top left? It's at top the top left corner. corner. Ah, here we go. Yeah. Hi. How does, how does Hi. one ping? Click and hold. Oh. It's just going to be a bunch of us just clicking and holding all over this, all over this you screen. Think... I like this building. I also like this building. They're so that far outside the cool. city center, though. Like, oh. you think a seat of power would be more protected, maybe? Interesting. Okay. I, okay. So I can I can think? dig on that. What, I can see the team? yes and the no to that. You know. Yeah. Like this this big chongus over here that I'm pinging mm -hmm. looks like a coliseum. Very like, feels very um. Just so much uh, pinging happening. What about this weird like, thing? Uh, what you know, like a thing with a dome. A, it's a yes, a dome. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that. A stadium with a dome a on it. A stadium with a dome. It's got a, the, yeah. the thing is, we don't need to decide what it is right now. We are okay. just well, selecting it. And then yeah, uh, at the I'm, end of the game, we come back to it. This yeah, is, Amanda was looking at this one. Oh, yeah. this kind of mountaintop dude? <laughs> I love all the things. They make me happy. <laughs> Wee! Yeah, I want to I try now. Wait. Okay, there you go. <laughs> oh, Roll all 20. Different. All the features. Ready? And the, one, yeah. two, three, go. <laughs> oh. Oh. Roll 20. So you see how much entertainment you've given us. Uh, I think based on just how heavily pinged that building was. Yeah. Just one. use that one. Yeah. This is, this is going to be our seat of power. Yeah. That yeah. is 
our seat of power. We don't label it. We don't color it. It is just what we need to remember is at the end of the game, what we are all sort of moving towards potentially or not, Got depending on the story. Um, so the next thing we do is choose a faction. So the book gives a couple of factions, the mages, the miners, the farmers, the ranchers, the thieves, the soldiers, the merchants, the elders, the clerics, and the strangers. I just threw a lot of information at you. Don't worry about it. It's cool. Uh, you can be any of those. I know someone said they wanted to roll for it. Do we? How many of them are there? There's 10. ten. There's 10, so we roll a d10. I, I'm down to roll for it. I think that's kind of a oh, good yeah. idea. Yeah. Or if you just have one that speaks to you, you can also do that. No, I mean, I let's. Have, I have oh, go one ahead. that Sorry. speaks to me, but we'll see. I mean, I don't want to be the only one that opts out of the rolling. I'm, I'm also not rolling. I know what I want to do. So. Okay. <laughs> I, I think I. I think I want to roll. I know that roll. sounds like fun. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so uh, for people who might not know, the easiest way to roll a d10 in roll 20 if you decide to do digital dice is on the sidebar here, you have uh, a d20 that you can click, uh, you can hover over and it'll give you dice options. And if you just click on the d10, you get a, you get a result. Nice. So that would be the elders. Is it the elders or is it the clerics? I believe it's the elders. So 10, it would be the strangers, oh, nine would be the clerics, yeah. Oh, huh? Oh. In my book, it's in a different order. Ooh. Wow. So apparently the printed and the PDF have different orders. Oh, no, no, no. You're, right. No, you're no, right. you're right. You're right. No, no, you're, you're right. right. I'm, 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 my brain is doing something weird. I'm, so sorry. Who, been who, who are you now, Aki? I am the elders. Elders. Okay. okay. All right. I will write that down as well for my brain. The elders. Oh, I hope I didn't take anybody's desired faction i'm happy to trade if <laughs> not necessary. yet not uh, yet yeah. we'll see what happens to max yeah max well i was thinking that since you two actually probably know what you want i oh feel free to go right ahead okay i was hoping to be the thieves oh nice uh, cool yeah i was uh, i was thinking to be the mages just because i like mages they're my favorite <laughs> <laughs> it's really funny because I was this close to not rolling and just choosing the clerics and just really leaning into my whole thing, but the elders was close enough. <laughs> you can just be old clerics. No, Let's... you can, and that's that's the cool thing here. We're not doing all of the factions, right? So if there are aspects of the fact that faction that you want to bring into your elders, like hey, our elders do this. That's also really cool too. Like there's there these aren't set in stone. It's our story to tell is the important part. They're set in bone. Roll in a d10. <laughs> <laughs> nope, Max is the clerics. Ooh. Yes. Oh, snoods, I'm the clerics. Okay, great. Nice. Um, well, there, oh man. The th like we have, okay. we have thieves, clerics, uh, mages, and elders. Okay. And for my mages, I want to be very clear. My mages are all druids. They're all druid magic. <laughs> See, I like I like druids too, but druids aren't mages. They in my world they are. Okay. You know what? <laughs> I you are absolutely fucking correct. I rescind my er erroneous and ignorant statement. No, no, you're right, but like, yeah. No, it, no, no. <laughs> I no. retract my statement. It okay. was demonstrably false. Okay, cool. <laughs> Aki's Thank out you. here spreading lies. By the Thank way, you. Max, are you are you actively gonna try and prove your shirt correct? Well, look, I know there's one person whose life I have definitely ruined. I have, I bought a shirt for his wife. <laughs> no, I was, oh, oh, I thought you oh, meant no. Sonia. Sonia. I no, bought she's a shirt for two. Sonia. Yeah, that's true. My poor <laughs> yeah, yeah. wife is gonna proudly I, wear this I, thing around. I have made the suggestion to Max that he should also get shirts for his parents. Uh, yes, and my I father mean, would find it hilarious, and my mother would be wildly confused. But uh, <laughs> all right, uh, but it's worth thinking about. Anyway, yes, I will try and prove it right, correct tonight. Tonight's the night, baby. All uh, right, all right. So next, choose a color. So 
This is a cool part of the map drawing. We're going to be, oh, that like turquoise blue. No, uh, just blue, just blue, blue just in blue. general. So yeah. on roll 20, uh, if you click the like paintbrush and go to freehand. Word. And then up in the left corner, you'll see a color. You can choose any of those colors. Or if you know like the, the random letter code for a specific. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't. So I'm stuck with these. But let me know what colors everyone chooses just so we can make sure there's no duplicates. Right. It's a highly clerical the color. The blue. You're, you're taking the blue? Okay. Yeah. Cool. I'm kind of feeling this like dark forest green, but I'm worried it's too dark. So I'm going to choose my, my and Amanda's favorite color instead, and I'll be orange. <gasps> orange! Oh, I should have been orange, but blue, because it, you know, okay. I never yeah. stopped thinking about baseball. Max, do you have a color? I was thinking this kind of light yellow. Yeah. Let's, uh, and I am thinking this red. So the only thing is I want to make sure that the red and the other colors aren't sort of with each other. If over next to the map, not on the map, yeah, let's just draw a line. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> You're drawing my spot. Sorry, I, I messed up. <laughs> oh, this is way so too I, skinny. Uh, I you can't even read. Is that yellow? I can't even see it. Yeah, yeah hold on. I got to do this in regular. In regular. Oh, it yeah. still sucks. Never mind. My, why don't you? Why yeah, don't my you? Yellow is terrible. How's this yellow? Is that too like gold? It looks like poop. Okay, so it's too <laughs> gross. Got it. <laughs> Thanks for disgusting. I'm yellow. sorry. Like, it's... No, you're right. I, I'm uh, not saying you're wrong. <laughs> let's see. There's this kind of taupey color here, but that also seems like it's kind of light. You could be purple. Yeah. Look, purple. That's true. I could be yeah. purple. Oh, purple is nice. That's nice and vibrant. Is this the same purple? Why is it always uh, so, so skinny? Yeah. What? skinny okay, regular. that little squiggle does not look you, right. So. Please. All right. Okay. Yeah. So now that we've now that we've obscured the the strange looking squiggle that Mar that Max, uh, we, we're just not going to talk about it. Anyway, was my squiggle um, inappropriate? I wasn't paying any attention. <laughs> it looked like a penis. I was just oh. it? I didn't. It like, looked like, like a, really a side, weird like penis. Like a sideways, but... a sideways penis. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> back to this. Show. We have <laughs> colors. <laughs> we have motif. Our... That's the motif through this whole thing now. Oh no. <laughs> All right. So uh, now that we have Whoa. our colors, the next thing that we do is ask who has last used a physical map to navigate somewhere. A physical map? A uh, physical map? A map. Who, who I mean, a map I feel like last? it would be one of us, Randy, because physical maps are a huge part of like getting around Japan. Yeah, maybe. Oh. Yeah, I definitely use them at like an amusement park or like, you know. All right. Well, you decide between the two of you because I, I can't like remember the last physical map I used was a Thomas guide. Like I think Yeah, I think that's fair. Early aughts. Did I, I also, move back first or you? Uh you got back I got back in March of 2019. I also got back March 2019, so we're really close. Uh Gosh, okay. Can you okay, look okay. up your uh, Ooh, your rock and scissors. Okay. Okay. One, Duncan. two, three, Hi. shoot. Sorry, show up. Good. Oh, that's a. Yeah. I go <laughs> on the show. Uh, All right, I win. Okay, you win. So you're first. Okay, cool. Uh, you guys got some, some culture there <laughs> that you weren't expecting. No. Uh, um, so you're the first person. So. What this means is you're going to draw a card. Uh, I just want to explain this first turn so that uh, those that watching us can, can understand how it works. Uh, when you draw a card, it's going to have one of the four suits. Those suits will determine uh, the type of building you're building. A heart for a social purpose, a diamond for financial purpose, a clover for a future purpose, and then the spade for the past purpose. And that can be whatever that means to you, okay? Uh, you'll also color in a building, and that building will be whatever that building is for you. The, the other thing to keep in mind is the value on the card. 
So if you have an ace, that's one through 10, 10 being very high, very powerful building, one being meh, you know, it's kind of cool. <laughs> um, and then uh, you're going to draw a number next to your building. It can be really small. So like, uh, yeah, just right next to where it is. Um, and the reason we're going to do that is then you decide what's called the beak, the feather, and the bone of your building. The beak is what do people say about this place? The feather is what the outside of the structure looks like. The bone is what is the building like on the inside. All right. And that's where, uh, that's sort of what a normal turn in this game looks like. But for those at home, we also like to RP a lot. It's kind of what we do. And so. I, I mean, I don't like it very much. I don't know. I kind of. <laughs> mm. I honestly Zoom bombed into this show accidentally yeah, last you, oh. season and. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> I, never <laughs> left. I turned on the camera and hoped people would show up. Well, you guys did well enough. So you passed right, the first audition. Convincing. Um, so what we're doing today is a little bit different from the game. So one thing is this is a map building game. So you draw the map and you tell the story of these factions over time. That's it. That means that, you, hey, you could import this map into one of your tabletop games. Uh, you could use it to have a culture in a city that your characters go to that's already really well-defined and factions vying for power in there. But what we're going to do is tell a story a little bit about what's going on inside that building. So we're going to be telling little vignettes uh, over the course of generations. So this can be any time that you want. Something in the life of that building. Okay? And then you can uh, decide what that scene is get some people to help play it out and we'll do little scenes like that. And that is just how we're gonna add our little RP flavor for our fun tonight, all right? But that is not necessarily what is in this game, but if you like to do that, hey, bring it to your table. <laughs> so uh, let's go ahead, Aki, take us away with the little card deck in Roll20. All right, I'm gonna draw a card. I'm gonna draw one card, just one. Here we go. Hacha. All right. I drew the two of spades. Ooh. The two of spades. Okay. So a spade is a future purpose. So this building is being used mm. for some future purpose. It is a low ranking building because it's only a two. A spade. It's a bad purpose. So, so it's a, yeah. Thanks. Uh, sorry. I, it's not a spade. It's two of clubs. I, if I said <clears throat> spade, that was an accent. It was a two of clubs. Um, a future purpose is mm -hmm. what it, uh, it does. So I want to say that there is, oh God, I did not mean to do that. There is in the, uh, in the city, several, um, several women that are, going to very soon uh, give birth. And so a building has been set aside as a, net, a nursery for them to go and lay their eggs and, you know, prepare for uh, their children. And so let's see. I feel like having the nursery in like a fairly like somewhere protected because it's children. Um, I like the idea of making it uh, this building here. I marked it by accident, but I'm gonna paint it this building here. Oh. Mm. It's got like a couple of levels to it. It's not very big. It's it's kind of a small, a small building, but it is sufficient for the needs of my faction. So the elders uh, in the elders, the faction that I play, um, are particularly invested in the future generations of the faction that they're in. Um, they are kind of the revered of their faction. Um, their faction is not necessarily all elders, but 
Um, the elders have all the power in the faction and so therefore are recognized as the elders by other factions. Uh, the other members of their family or faction are not really public facing. Um, they're very, I, they're, they're very insular. Um, there is an elder inside the nursery um, as it is being constructed. And she has been overseeing the building of this nursery very intently. She's kind of pitter patted around uh, very much uh, trying to ensure that everything is as it's supposed to be. Um, my, my beak for this place is that um, a lot of people are saying that they are concerned about this particular nursery um, because of the faction that is in charge of building it. They are not sure that their children will be welcome in this nursery um, or safe. Uh, and they are worried that this is not a space that is being provided to the city as a whole, but to this specific faction. Um, and this is only made more difficult by the fact that the uh, elder that has been supervising the building of this place is very uh, quick and adamant about shooing uh, non-faction members away from it. Um, the structure is two stories. Um, it has a large lower hall and then a smaller upper floor, uh, a bit like a rookery. Um, the birds that cannot yet fly um, live towards the top, uh, as birds are meant to, uh, live up towards the top. Uh, so that when they learn to fly, they have a lot of space below uh, in order to do that. Um, and on the inside of the building, um, there are golden polished beams of wood that uh, support the entire structure of this place. It is slowly but surely becoming one of the most beautiful buildings in the area. Um, it has huge windows that allow lots of natural light to pour in from the inside. There is something almost reverent about this place. Um, there are nests built into the sides uh, and like there are platforms all over uh, the, the walls of the, of the building in order to support mothers and their children. Um, and the entire floor is kind of covered in this thick um, strong straw um, that smells like it's fresh. So it smells like freshly mown um, kind of this, like uh, if you've ever smelled the Tommy, that's what the floor of this, of this uh, nursery smells like that fresh grass straw kind of, of smell. Um, it's very warm in here. It, it has an inviting, uh, and inviting um, ambiance to it, despite the fact that it is so fiercely guarded. Um, I think one day while the elder who supervises its building is uh, watching over things, she notices uh, about a block or two away, a, a very pregnant looking <clears throat> young lady kind of staring at the nursery from a corner. Um, just off in the distance. Um, she doesn't recognize this young lady um, and her hood is kind of pulled up over her head so her face can't really be seen. Um, uh, the elder uh, calls out to her um, in order to, to draw her closer. But the moment um, the woman realizes she's been seen, she darts away and uh, runs off into the distance. Um, there are people around who notice this and the building witnesses their conversation about this um, incident. Um, so I'd really like to see like the moment that uh, the, the, the people that witness this kind of turn to each other and, and kind of talk amongst themselves. Um. All right. What was that? Oh, 
I've never seen her a day in my life. She doesn't live around here. No. She also was wearing a weird hood. Never seen colors like that. What do you think she's doing around here? You don't suppose she was spying? Oh. Well, they're not going to trust sense. a person running around in Why the would hood. she be spying? She's pregnant. Well, what? you know how the other factions can be. Yes. I'm they so want sure their children in here. But she's, you, she's not very stealthy. No, no. She doesn't need to be. She just... She, she, she may want her child here and be unhappy that we are building such a grand place for our children to play and grow up. I mean, wouldn't you want your children to be here if you didn't live here? Well, I mean, I do, so I never really gave it much thought. Hmm. Well, I'm sure she does. I think there's something to that spying, you say. We should take close care of our elders. If anything were to befall them, it would be calamitous. Yes, they built this place for us. We must protect them. The elders know best. Well, we should keep an eye out for anyone wearing her colors. If they come around, away they go. Okay. All right. Yeah, sure, sure. I'll keep an eye out. The building wonders why it matters who lives inside it. The building couldn't really care less. <laughs> the building <laughs> is here to shelter, and that is all. All right. So uh, I'll go ahead and color that in uh, yep. while the next scene goes. So. And I don't have who's next because of the layout. So you should go. I mean, you right. go. It would, be, it would be me then if we were going in order, or if we were going in order, it would be me, Amanda, Randy, and Max. But we okay. can go in whatever yeah. order. Yeah. No, okay, I will be second since Amanda has deemed it so. Thank you, Amanda, for, for no, thank you because I am, uh, you know, very shy. Um, also, if you deal, if you get the, the Joker, just ignore it and draw one more. Okay. Uh, just because there's, mm. it, there we already that. have a Joker in here. It's Amanda. <laughs> I was gonna uh, say, who's owning that right now? Because yeah. All right. So I'm I got. Hilarious. I drew, and I'm gonna put it on the table just so we can keep track. Oh, I did not mean to draw on it though. Uh, I drew a four of hearts. Cool. And Dip so, yep. Yeah. So, uh, uh. A heart is a social purpose. And so the mage's uh, building is going to be, you know what? It is going to be on the other side of town. And it, I have decided to put it. It's going to be this uh, square building. And yes. Just draw a one. It's going to be this building here. Uh, I'll finish coloring it in later. But uh, this building, uh, and let me just make sure that I write down what it is as well. Of course, the mage puts themselves as close to the seat of power as they can. You know what? It has to deal with the tower itself, mm -hmm. not the seat of power. Thank you. That's what a brown noser would say. Okay, you guys. Anyway, um, so uh, this building is a library, a multi-storied library, as many druids are wont to build. Uh, and and the, the reason it's built here is underneath is a natural cavern system. And so they gather here and they travel both up and down into the many levels where they have all of these tomes of knowledge that they've gathered, or at least that's what people say about the place. Uh, not even all of the mage guild are allowed in here. This is after sort of a certain amount of schooling and being allowed to enter 
this fancy library. Um, on the outside are what kind of look like uh, pyramid steps down. So it's a, it's a weird pyramid tower, I guess. Um, but it shines with a uh, very slick black outer edge, like almost like obsidian. Um, like it's made almost completely out of that. Um, the inside is lit a lot by candlelights with lots of pillars and tapestries hanging on the wall. And of course, walls lined with books and scrolls and tapestries and uh, people speaking in hushed tones. Uh, but on the very top floor of this building is a giant room with windows on all sides facing out across the city um, with a big giant brazier on top that can be. <laughs> yep. Brazier. Brazier. Nope. Yeah. Brazier. That's yeah. canon. I pronounced Deal it correctly. <laughs> Sorry, that's my fault. I you know what? The, the, the number one reason words are mispronounced is because a lot of the times, the first time we ever see or have any contact with those names, those words are in books and we never hear them said. Yep. Nope. So, yep. so most people wouldn't know that new. it's brazier. <laughs> Thank you for. I don't even know what a brazier is. If that helps, it's those. So. <laughs> it's those. Uh, like metal. Those big metal. Like, um, like you know when they light the Olympic torch. Yeah. Oh yeah. Thing. Oh yeah. Like That's those brazier. big oh, metal like rigs for yeah, fire. Yeah, like on top of the like building, that. just like yeah, yeah, yeah. to light. Brazier. Word. Okay. So. Don't be me. Learn. Ask your friends about pronunciation. No, no, no. <laughs> it's totally fine. No, no, no. Um, this is. Oh, this is dare. not something we shame people for. No, that's the true. only reason I laughed is because you said brazier. You're right. Like, You're right. not that it was wrong. It's just that you said brazier. <laughs> brazier that's is right. also a great word. I just it is a great word. That to be canon now, where it's like I'm just thinking of it having like in the yeah. upper echelons of our magical like the, temple the, the, library. The, bra the, the braziers just... are actually dual. It's like two, like Ooh. two cups. <laughs> yeah. By the it's way, like I do love that I unintentionally wreck. put Max's face like right between like <laughs> pectoral <laughs> muscles of whoever is wearing it. Like it's legit, oh, just like, just right like there. Nest, nested yeah. right between the nestled boobies. right in there. <laughs> Thanks for assuming. I, I'm, glad we, I, I'm glad we. I'm glad we brought it back. There. <laughs> All right. Know. So, <laughs> so for this for this scene, what I imagine is a meeting of some of the upper echelon people up here. Uh, they are sitting in this top room of the library with stacks of books all around them. But specifically, one person sits there whose wife earlier today brought back news of a brand new nursery being built on the other side of town. Mm -hmm. One that wasn't agreed upon by all of the city council, at least according to the mages. <sighs> They really will just do whatever they want, won't they? The elders think they don't have to follow any rules because they're old. I know. It's, it's really awful. I just don't know what it's coming to. Well, I, at least... No, please. No, I had nothing of import to say. All I wish to say is that my wife was scared out of her mind when she saw the rest of them watching her as she just simply looked at their building. They well, love to flaunt their wealth in our faces. To hear them say it, they earned the right to be snooty and, well, it's none of our never mind, is it? No. No. Which... But weren't they going to build something else there before they they took it over? Oh, it's very possible that you are correct. I, I don't know, like part of a, I think it was like part of a community center. Oh. Yes, yes, I remember. It was going to be a home for wayward children and a food well, bank, as I recall. Well, and now it's a home for rich ones. Well, well. Uh, doesn't that mean we can we can sanction them in some way? They've obviously violated the, uh, the, the, the rules of the original agreement and therefore uh, forfeit their right to the building. Is, is, isn't, that, isn't that the case? Well, we, well 
I mean, we can't kick out babies. We also, so we absolutely can. Yes, we could, but then other factions may want to challenge us. It and looks for the bad. time being, I think we should keep our heads down. If you say so. Let them have their fancy nursery. We will amass our power in other ways. For example, the great tomes that we have acquired here, we shall continue to amass them. And perhaps there will be something in them. Yes, what do you have to say, Pipe Smoke here? Perhaps, 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 you say every time, perhaps there will be value. They have a building with value now. We have a pile of books. I do have one other suggestion. What say we uh, use some of this power that we have and to strike a bargain with the farmers? After all, their crops would benefit from our magics, and we could come to an agreement with them that will make their food easier for us to access. Mm. Mm. This, this I understand. Agreed. Let us parley with the farmers. And that's where we'll end this scene. The building itself, feeling the weight of what's just happened, a massive alliance, or at least the, the beginnings of that alliance wanting to be built. Uh, it, it, it senses that there's something more to come, but for now, that is where we will end. All right. Uh, Amanda, you want to go next? Yeah. Sure. Let's see. Go, Amanda. Go, 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 go. Oh, okay. Ooh, what was this? Not my favorite start. Ooh. Oh, you got a rival. <gasps> yes. So. Cool. You get to make a rival from an uh, uh, someone else's faction as well as a building. Uh, so much sort. responsibility. Yeah, you're so cool. How do you erase again? Uh, I just go to the pool tool and like click on it and hit X. And just yeah, you can select and delete. Yep. Um. This is uh this is not going to be great for my plan to win over the seat of power since it's zero points for now. <laughs> Um, You're blue, Amanda, is that right? That's correct. Uh, so a spade is a past purpose. Um, so... Hmm, a past purpose. Oh, interesting. So I am going to say... I'm looking at the outskirtsy buildings here. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to say, so if you go down, if you look down toward the bottom, um, there is Ooh. right here, kind of hidden. Oh, why aren't you working? Are you clicking on it? Yeah. I was yeah, trying. Sorry, I used the wrong thing. This one here. Oh, okay. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. Sneaky. Um, so that is going to be... So I have to do, do... Just do a regular one, right? And then I do the yeah. rival thing? Okay. Yeah. Yes. So this uh, is the, the former home of, uh, of the Thieves Guild. Um, I'm going to go back in time a little bit. I think maybe like like 75 years ago, like, you know, three generations, let's say, um, from where y'all started. Um, and it is kind of hard to see. Um, this map is a little out of date. So there's some, uh, some foli, it was much, uh, much more foliage around it. So it was sort of kind of hidden, like, not like, you know, it's obviously not like a very deep forest or anything. It was just like unassuming. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Um, There's which been is, development and in industry since then. 
Got yes, it. which is exactly, uh, you know, which was exactly what they wanted, kind of far away from, you know, the main city center, but close enough to uh, have access to the things they wanted to have access for, uh, to. Um, so, <clears throat> Beak, what do people say about this place? Well, now, I mean, if you were to say something about it in a current time, uh, it's completely abandoned, but the, the, the trees and the foliage are all gone. Um, it's just kind of a, a crumbling uh, mess. Uh, there's not really a whole lot to it. Like part of the second floor uh, has caved in um, and there's just dirt and broken pieces of, of wall and ceiling and floor just uh, all over the place. Uh, back then, however, uh, it was a kind of, let's see, what was it? You know, I think it was just really somebody's house. It was a very small um, kind of two-story, little two-story house uh, that was owned by the sister of one of the founders of the Thieves Guild. So it's perfect cover, right? If you just, if you go there sometimes, like, oh, no one's going to look at you weird. Um, and what is the building like on the inside? I mean, it's hard to tell it from someone's regular home, honestly, you know, like there's a hearth and, uh, uh, and a table to sit at and, you know, beds upstairs. It's, 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 but it also has a very large basement, which is not on the, uh, plans registered with the, uh, with the city. Um, and that is where I would like to uh, send y'all uh, as uh, the soon to be head and creator of the Thieves Guild uh, gathers his first little crew for um, their first little job. <clears throat> All right, then. What brings us here? Thieving. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure we're here to steal shit. Oh, all right, right. I mean, that's what you hired us for, right? That's what you hired us here for, right? That's what you hired us here for, right? Oh, Wait, oh, me? Yes, you. Oh, oh right, it was, it. Who <laughs> it was me. It was me, sorry. This bird brain. Listen, it was a joke, okay? Like, I don't know, I'm not a very good actor, so sue me. Well, oh. um, no, I'd rather not know. I mean... That's Again, fair. not an actor. Thief. Thief. We are what? here to do thief thing. I'm what? starting to think I chose the wrong crew. No, no, no. Let me no, get no. a steal first. Yes. Let me get a steal first. What would you have a steal? It's somebody's heart. That's... No, that's what I'm trying to tell you. It's not about what you steal. It's about the art of thieving. It is about the it is about the joy and the fun and outsmarting someone and and then ending up with some really cool stuff afterward. I like it. Having an having some kind of an agenda is just going to get you caught faster. No, there's no rhyme or reason. If you see it and you want it, you take it. But what if we get caught? That's your own problem. Oh. If we find out you betrayed this thieves guild or the location of this thieves guild i see honor mm. among thieves and all that eh well it is dishonorable i would say to turn on your comrades is it not uh, well, yeah. of course depends on if you really think you have comrades well that's i don't deep. know any of you uh, maybe that's maybe that's a good well, thing. Maybe Roger, we give each other Roger, code names. Roger, you're my nephew. Oh, code names. I like it. I will be. Oh. No, no, wait, I'm... Roger. What is this? What? You are my nephew. It's not. It's not. We don't know each other. What are you well, talking about? That... Well, and now they know. I... Yes, they know. They knew before this. I, I, I've Did known you know for a long this? time. Yes, yeah, so. I mean, we're family. Brother, we all know each other's yeah. names. I mean, that's right. kind of yeah. how it works. Okay. Listen, I, I get it. You don't have to be a mysterious thief. You just have to be a thief, Roger. 
That being said, I do like the idea of code names. Right. Just because we all know each other's names doesn't mean everybody else has to know our names. I sure, but the whole point is is to not get noticed so that nobody asks you for your name. That's, that being that's... said, if the worst happens, it's good to be prepared. Oh, I guess so. I, I, again, I, sh mm. okay. Well, I'm, what is your code with, name then? Damn. Uh, my code name mm. will be Fluffgarten. All, all right, all right. Um, scraggle tooth, give him my teeth, and he smiles, and the, the, there's like half of them missing. <laughs> something intimidating, something tough. Marshmallow, fart noodle, fart noodle. All right, I like it, it's got a nice ring to it. Strike oh. the strike fear in the hearts these of birds. Are the Worst code names I've ever heard, and this is the this is a terrible idea. All I wanted to do was create just a a, a just a powerful organization that wasn't in it for the stuff, but was in it for the joy of it. And and then our get you nincompoops instead. Well, you got to start somewhere, am I right? You know what? That's the no, smartest thing anybody said all night. And scene. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Cool. Very into this. Oh well, yeah, I gotta draw it now. We fulfilled yeah. we fulfilled the Easter egg obligation for the season. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what's happening? Sorry, sorry. It's all tied together. Uh, it's all so, connected. Yes. And then you also get to create a rival. Oh, oh yeah. Dread. Okay. Yep. Um got a rivals too. So Beats. yeah, tell us about those again. So arrival is any uh, person from another faction that you want to make up who is opposed to your group in some way. So, so okay. someone who, for some reason, has something out with either this place or the people who are meeting here in this place. Yeah. It does say specifically the rival has to be from another player's community. Yeah, sorry. Okay, so what is your reputation, appearance, and motivation? Um, <clears throat> all right, well, I mean, I think, uh, oh, it has to be, oh, because I was like, soldier would make so much sense. Um, I mean, you could have magical soldiers or religious yeah. soldiers or old soldiers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can, we can add attributes to whatever we want. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think you'll uh, you're gonna get uh, arrivals of a uh, of a um, a regiment of uh, cleric soldiers. Mm. Um, they were sent on a on a mission to uh, kind of rid part the corners of the city as it starts to grow and spread outward and and populate. Um, you know, of the of the of the uh, riffraff who uh, have horrible morals and do horrible things, and uh, they've done this with uh, all the precision of a hammer, uh, I'm sure. So that's their reputation is uh, just all the subtlety of a hammer. Um, and their appearance, um, so they wear their uh, their religious loyalty right on their chests. It's just it's, it's definitely branded right across the front. Um, and you know, they're birds, so they're not particularly hardy, so they're not wearing you know like metal uh, like armor or, or anything like that. Yeah, it's. It's it's all very strategically placed, but uh, you can move in it. So some kind of probably some kind of leather, um, uh, really thick. Um, and the true motivation, uh, really, they're just following orders. Their motivation doesn't particularly matter as they kick down the door to the uh, sister's house um, and and raid it. Um, she demands to for reasoning for why they are uh, 
in, entering her house unwelcome uh, and none of them answer. They just quietly and efficiently go about their job trashing the place basically uh, and eventually do find the basement. Um, but of course, because at least there's at least one good thief in there, it is completely empty and uh, in very innocent looking. But still, they suck. Yeah. The end. Do they got a name? Oh man, now you're gonna make me come up with mm. a name for the for the. I mean, like, not just just this, this regiment. It can be whatever. Uh, they are they are the forty first. Just they're the forty. Yeah. They're the forty first regiment. There have been forty more before them. <laughs> nice. All clearly eminently capable. Mm. All right. Uh, Okie dokie. Let's draw a card. I just love, like, it'd be really funny if the layout okay. for the next show just Kings. ended up being, just ended up, all of our names are Max Isaacson. Because <laughs> they already, they already are. But, like. Everybody, everybody's like Ooh. Max Isaacson for a hot second at the top of the show. Yeah. Okay. Drawn a queen. How dare Let's you talk about me like that? See, I've just been doing caricature work. <laughs> um, all right. Let's see. A building, a building. What did well, you draw? A queen. A queen. The queen of, what? of hearts. Oh, of hearts. Queen of hearts. So. This is a, this is a building with a social uh, function, which the queens in, of hearts. That's just fucking brilliant. In my opinion, is probably where we're going to have our great temple. So mm -hmm. I think we're going to go with this guy way down here at the bottom. This kind of big ziggurati thing that I'm pinging. <laughs> so, <I like> it. <laughs> uh, so what we've got is kind of. Um, you know, this is the religious center of our town. Uh, it stands obviously very high on a hill. It can be seen from almost anywhere in town. Uh, you know, as much as there are the seats of power, you know, that, that run this town, this place was specifically chosen by the clerics to be the most notable spot in the whole city, right? All eyes fall on this uh, building. So what people say about it kind of depends on how you feel about the clerics. Uh, you know, some, obviously, the devout and the faithful love it. It is a place to make pilgrimage. It is a place to walk barefoot up the hills and across the stones and sticks and to, to, to feel the kind of earth beneath you, the pain of hard work, the exertion that it takes to find divinity and to find purity. Um, it, it is a place that, that, uh, that cleanses you uh, for blasphemers and heath. It is a kind of blot on the sky uh, it stands above them as a symbol of power. It stands as a constant shadow being cast across the town. It, it, it throws itself across the entire horizon and breaks the sky with its kind of self-indulgence. Um, so that, I think, is what people say about it. As far as what it appears like, it is a very tall, like, ziggurat. Um, think the Tower of Babel or these, like, ancient pyramids, you know. It is reaching for the sky, quite literally. It is a building that is trying to actually touch the divine, uh, you know, which is to say flight, which is to say freedom, something that we no longer have, that the Raven folk can no longer truly fly. Um, and so it is, it is getting us towards that flight, towards that freedom, towards that kind of perfect sense of self. Um, it's going way, way up there. 
uh, on the inside, it is almost empty, right? It is just a giant cavern of a building. And then ringing around the edges are these kind of small rooms that you can climb up to on ladders and where you can go and you can contemplate uh, being of being elevated. All of them have glass floors. So as you stand in them, you look down on the world below you and you think of yourself as a flying creature. Um, it's where the priests and the, and, and the you know, devout go to pray. It is where people uh, discuss theology. It is also a quiet and secluded place for the church to conduct its business. Um, as you go higher and higher, you are obviously in higher echelons of the church. Uh, you know, the top most space being dedicated to probably the, the, the grand priest or whoever, uh, runs this puppy, the grand cleric. Um, and, uh, <laughs> since I've have to, uh, create a rival for this thing. I think um, I would like to create a mage uh, who is clearly a non-believer, yeah. uh, a, a, a blasphemer, as it were, a heretic. Um, let's see, rival for clerics. Uh, and his name will be... They're druids, right? Yep. Will be um, Lightfoot. Uh, fin whistle. F I N W H I S T L E. Those names. Fin whistle. Yep. Lightfoot Fin Whistle. And Lightfoot Fin Whistle is a very young uh, mage, although eminently capable, uh, notably so, actually. And found that uh, his belief in, in religion and in these kind of great uh, callings that the clerics try and, and hand out is absolutely non-existent. Because everything that he has built, he has built on his own, through his own capability, and through learning and study. None of it is divine, right? None of it comes from above or on high. And uh, he truly believes that you, you, you build your own fate. Um, he is short. He is kind of stocky, well-built, tough for a bird, um, but youthful. He doesn't look like a kind of calloused creature. He's not hardened by the world, but he's short and capable and, and, and athletic, like a little mm -hmm. box. Um, and as he slowly realizes that, uh, that he has no use for the church, he starts to see it as a truly oppressive institution. Um, one that is not actually aiming to liberate people by giving them the gift of flight, but lying to people and saying, if you believe in flight, you will be free which he doesn't think is the truth. So he is trying to change the way that the people of the town think about themselves and think about their uh, relationship to flight. Um, as for the scene that I'd like to play out uh, in, in the church, I think I'd like to see a moment um, possibly... Uh, a younger moment from from Lightfoot Finn Whistle, um, probably the last time that he went to church and met with a cleric, uh, and sat and and took counsel. And for for the purposes of this scene, let's say that counsel in this uh, system is a group thing. You sit and you you talk and you unburden yourself together uh you know sort of like a All right.
and I, I've found myself deep in my studies and, and realizing, realizing that what I've been taught here from you all brings me so many questions. Well, yeah. If you have the answers, you Max, would not you, we, be... we dropped you, sorry. You oh. dropped out for a second. You're back now. You dropped me entirely. It was so hard. Um, my child, if you had all the answers, you would be here and I would be there asking them of you. Oh, I am only here to help you leaders. ask questions. Then, then tell me, why... Why don't we tell people to, to get more education, to go out and to do hard work so that they may prosper, so that they may build a business or do these things? Why are we supposed to unburden ourselves? Well, what is the value of a business? What is it that hard work gives you? What is it that taking on the world builds for you? I came here because my father tells me that I should give up my dreams of going to study more in the Mages Guild. Mm. But my father spends all day reading his ludicrous books. I apologize. I know better. You, but you, you wish to go study and learn and yet in the same breath uh, speak ill of books. I sp Is there some sort of difference between the books you want to read and the books your father reads? Yes. The books I want to read are about the sciences, the, the, the actual physical manifestations of magic in the world that we can see and observe with our own eyes. Not the promised tales written in your, your fancy books, not sitting on some high pedestal above the city and watching as the poor and the hungry go about below. Hmm. And what would you say to someone who had no aptitude in your magics about your books, do they help them? If, if anyone were to take the time to study and work hard, then yes. That is how I've gotten as far as I've gotten. That's why I need, why I want to study. And my father keeps telling me that I should stop and be here. I mean, that is how I have gotten where I am. I have also read much and studied much and gave much thought to many things. And if you are speaking of the divine and those here on earth working together and creating something beautiful, you are standing in such a place. Birds yeah. built it and it is filled with the love and acceptance but who divine. among you has ever flown? When has flying ever been real? Oh, there was a time. <laughs> so the stories say, I don't think I believe the story. Oh, hmm. oh, oh. I don't believe in, oh. I don't believe we can fly. Oh. I believe the truest of, um, of all these things is what we can study and learn. Little fledgling, what you have said is blasphemy. And what would you do to me? I will do nothing to you. And nor shall anyone here. We shall not take you in. We shall not show you kindness. We shall not show you ill will. If you do not wish to fly, then you are no bird. Nothing 
will happen to you. I'll prove you all wrong if it's the last thing I ever do. You are welcome to do so. We wish you nothing but the best. But you must leave. I've never been so insulted in my long life. <laughs> That's a good Birds scene. Yeah. Fly. Oh man, and and just just what came across my mind was wait till uh, Lightfoot Thin Whistle gets home because his parents are definitely drinking the religious juice. Kool Aid, yeah, <laughs> been there, so. done that. <laughs> All right, it is my turn, and I've drawn my card. Um, -ha 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 -ha. Yes, oh, no. I have drawn the Ten of Spades. Go. <laughs> I have drawn the Ten of Spades. Um, spade is a, a building for a past purpose. Um, but I with going, lots of influential power. Yeah, lots of influential power. So mm -hmm. I am going to say that at one point, this city was a, a monarchy. Like the, soci the society was a monarchy. Um was ruled by, you know, royalty, um, but is no longer. But the location of the old palace is still mm. around. And I'm going to say it is this building up here in the very top kind of center is was once the grand palace uh, of the city. Uh, what people say about it is that... Um, they, the palace is kind of looked at as sort of a relic of a bygone era. And while people mm. kind of visit it almost like in, in a tourist sort of way, uh, there's a certain amount of like reverence that kind of is associated with the place. Um, because even though the, the society is no longer a monarchy, uh, the elders have done a lot to like preserve it. It's almost like a museum now. Um, the outside of it is not is, is not overly ostentatious, despite being a palace. Um, it is a very large but functional building on the outside. Like there's some columns and there's a little bit of like filigree here and there. But uh, it is it is a it's a state house. It is meant to receive guests and like you know ambassadors and stuff like that. Um, so it is beautiful, but it is not like it is not something that necessarily flaunts the wealth of the city. It is it is meant to to be more functionary than like for decoration um, on the outside, at least. On the inside, however, it is absolutely breathtaking when you walk in marble and and um you know skylights and art all over beautiful like thick draped velvets and like long like huge tapestries and 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 finely woven carpets that stretch for lengths and lengths uh like beautiful like chess chest uh like board style tile, like marble tiling on the floor, like a, a, a throne room with a ceiling vaulted so high, like the, the acoustics in here are impeccable, pun intended. Um, <laughs> so it is, yeah, it is, um, it is beautiful on the inside, absolutely meant to awe and inspire. Um, and the elders have done a lot of hard work to keep it looking as nice as it has, uh, though it has been over, like, o near, over a generation since the last king and queen ruled this place. Um, this building once witnessed the crowning of what is considered by most of history to be the greatest ruler this city has ever known. Uh, a young, a young woman who uh, was never meant to be the re like the the um, monarch of this place, uh, but saw um, her her family pass away due to um, uh, unexpected accident. Um, 
they were waylaid on the street by, you know, some ruffians. And so she was, uh, she was to be crowned. She was probably only 13, not old enough really to go on a big family trip, um, but lost everyone she loved. Um, she had only her, like her father's advisors and the other members of the court to guide her. Um, and I'd love to see a scene uh, right before she is about to be crowned, where she is in her rooms with a few of her father's advisors, like who are, are helping uh, prepare her for this, um, this monumentous occasion. Okay. What? Are you, are you done? Are you done yet? Well, I, my liege, if we don't Don't have call me that! Your Highness, if we don't... Don't call me that either! Your greatness. Does that work? No, I have a name. No, you have a title, child, and you have an obligation to live up to it. If we don't have the right filigree, the right jewelry, the right outfit, it isn't the right ceremony. Right. Everyone is out oh. there waiting for you. Right according to who? A tradition. Yeah. Aren't I in charge now? Am I in charge now? You will be in charge once this is over. Until then, you are a young child who is in our care and you will do as you are told. I am not a young child. I am a child, sure. I'm not a, I'm not a baby. You are not a baby. You're. But Let's you, say. you, Lawrence, are certainly a bully. Uh, not you. Yeah, oh. your name's not Lawrence. Oh. <laughs> she was talking to you. <laughs> I am just a humble servant to this great city. I mean, good for you, I guess, but I'm, I'm gonna be that too, okay? And so is my dad. <sighs> yes. Oh, hmm. it's time. Would the Lady Adelaide please come forth and receive her appointment. I guess I don't really have a choice, huh? You'll no. do amazingly. I don't believe you. You were just yelling at me and telling me what to do. I, I'm trying to let you know that this is all really serious. Yes, it is all a You lot. think I don't know no, that? I know you think, you no, know that. no, you stop talking. You think I don't know that? My parents just died and now you're dressing me up like this and you're telling me what to do and you're telling me what to say and the, we barely even had a funeral it just yes. happened yes you're right your family did die and you are now the one in charge and if you don't act like the ruler that you know you really need to be at this time then what do you think will happen to the rest of the city you can do this but you have to be what these people out there are waiting for you to be no pressure. No. No pressure at all. And indeed, the Queen Adelaide turned out to be one of the most fair-minded and just rulers the city had ever known, proving her advisors quite wrong, or perhaps quite right, um, by rising to the occasion. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happened to Lawrence, like <laughs> legit by Lawrence. Often, yeah. <laughs> just a quick, just a quick gut check, though. Is everybody okay? That was no. that was an mm -hmm. intense little scene. I want to make sure everybody's oh yeah feeling yeah. all right. Just yeah, kicked Lawrence of right Lawrence off a cliff when he wasn't dead. looking. <laughs> yeah, Lawrence got the axe. Uh, oh, this is a nice cliff. Maurice sure. did not die yet. Huh? <laughs> all right, so that's that's my scene, and I'm gonna I'm gonna be over here doing a color. Oh, right. And uh, I'll, I'll let the next person. Randy. And don't forget to write two next to your new building. I shall. All right. Uh, so I'm going to draw a card, and I drew not quite as good as a 10. 
but I guess I'll take a five. <laughs> God. All right. So uh, I'm right behind you. A five uh, of what? I can't a five of spades. So, Wait, so many spades. Yeah, there's a lot of the past uh, boiling up here. Uh, and specifically, uh, this is, yes, let's do that. So I will choose these, this row of buildings here, sort of below the palace. Um, they are tunnels that lead up, like throughout that sort of side area of this town. But what they once were, were where the coup that happened against uh, the monarchy, this is years after uh, the greatest ruler that the city's ever known, but bef like what ended the, uh, the monarchy in this town. Uh, so sort of uh, there was a coup kind of thing, uh, a coup kind of thing, or and they use these tunnels to it both. It was cuckoo. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> but oh, I was uh, going to ask if it was planned by pigeons. Uh, maybe it was. No, a murder of crows. A murder of crows. Uh, and they, at that time, were. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry. It was a. Oh, what's it? What's it? What's it? It's a, a parliamentary of ravens. A parliament of rooks. I think it's a parliament of rooks. A parliament of rooks, yes. I think. I just think parliament is a great way to count things. Uh, thank you for that knowledge. Um, Sorry, what are the buildings exactly? Yeah, I so I, I was about to say. Uh, so right now, uh, they are uh, just sort of watched by the mages' uh, guild, making sure that people don't go in and out. The mages, from time to time, turn into little creatures to go and spy through them throughout the town or so people say uh turning into creatures like rats or uh like other sewer dwelling type creatures which isn't the most savory thing to all the people in town it's a little bit creepy birds turning into other animals why would you even <clears throat> want to do that i don't know but uh the outside of these buildings now are blocked off from the public. There are uh, big warning signs that you'll be punished if you enter them without the authorized permission. Um, it tells the address of where to go to get said permission. It's very bureaucratic. <laughs> um, but they, they are, there are like openings in it that people, if they wanted to try to sneak, is, is possible still, but they are being monitored. Uh, regardless of its appearance, what is the inside of the building like? Uh, the inside are dark, no light. Um, there's sort of creek water running underneath. It's sort of eerily quiet. Um, and every once in a while, people who have snuck in and out as some young teenage uh, raven folk have said they've done they swear they've seen eyes watching them <clears throat> uh but what we are going to play out is a scene between um just sort of the people who caused the coup so the night that they've They've sort of snuck into the city. They've gotten through all of these defenses by coming through these tunnels and digging their way in. And they're, they've just knocked down the last thing and they are trying to decide where to go and how to pull off their great heist. Uh, heist, well, well, murder. <laughs> King Francis will never see us coming. <laughs> but he probably can't see two feet past his own beak most times. Well, when we fit in with his menagerie, he won't know which of them has killed him. I'm really excited to blow things up. Yes, you'll be able to do that for sure. Hey. I, we all have our royal guard finery ready, correct? Um, Uniforms are in hand. All right. 
it, so we sneak it. I forgot mine. Oh my goodness. Well, I, I had to bring all of the, the explosives and the other Shh. tools and stuff. What's it's late. We don't want people to know we're blowing up the palace. I. It's all right. I, I brought a lot of, like, explosives, and then I forgot my okay. outfit. Okay. But I think there's an extra right. under the rocks over there, so don't worry. Unclench. Unclench? What? I don't... Uh, anyway. Do you really want me to tell you? No, no, no. Mm. I'm, I'm okay. Um, all right. So we're going to go in there, play the guard for the evening, and then when he's off to bed, that's when the fun will begin. Hey? Eh? Yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know that I'd call murder fun exactly, but blowing things up is really fun. Yes. Oh. Well, it all depends on your outlook, I suppose. Yeah, I suppose that's true. I just, I just think it's icky. Hmm. Oh. Let's it go. It usually does make a mess. Yes. Let's go before it gets too late. <clears throat> and that's where I'm going to end the scene. And what I will say is, you will notice that they kill the king. But don't blow up the hall. And I will let that be just something that we can decide as the story goes on. But there was one who was very eager to blow it up and did not blow it up. So Aww. let's figure out why later, maybe. 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 <laughs> maybe. Right. maybe. Um, or maybe, maybe it's just a mystery for another time. Yeah. All right. Amanda. Hit me. Sorry, what do I, I got? Keep, like I'm distracted. There is a, a little bug flying around. <coughs> you should name him. It is an eight of clubs. Ooh. Oh, not bad. That's a lot of influence. Good job. An eight of clubs. So clubs <coughs> are for a future purpose. <coughs> not the past no more. So I am going to... So if we move back, we fast forward to the present, you know, we fast forward a few generations and the, uh, the Thieves Guild um, has become, you know, kind of like the version of, uh, of, like, of like kind of like the mafia, you know, like they have some serious underground like power, um, but, you know, they try not to be jerks about it they're not like again like the, the the founding principle of we steal because it's fun and because um they're not exactly robin hood but you know they try and help their community they're just a very sticky fingered part of the community anyway so it is the uh, coming up upon care. the 75th anniversary of the founding of the guild and the uh families <clears throat> of all of the thieves and whatnot, they're all going to gather together, kind of like having a family reunion. And they're going to play a game that oh, they yeah. all, that the Thieves Guild invented um, <laughs> called <laughs> Flingin' Flamo. Um, we're all going to play, we're coming together to eat and talk and play a rough and tumble match of Flinging Flamo. And we are going to do that. Claim it. Do it. <laughs> Right here. Ooh. Oh. Um, so, mm. Flinging Flamo is, you know, very hilariously cleverly named uh, uh, loose, not really a sport as so much as you stand on opposite sides, kind of like a do kind of like dodgeball and throw flaming balls at the other team <laughs> that are then batted back and forth with various handheld. <clears throat> Is it like high alive? It, it sounds like the sport they play in Avatar The Last Airbender of Korra. Oh, kind of. But oh, it's just, yeah. It's just, um, it's much more. Uh, pro benders. Yeah, pro benders. It's much what less slick. Point? It's definitely way less slick than that. Okay. You know, this is like a, just a step up from like a kid's like like block game. It, it's you know, like, like the game that evolves into that. Can 
Can we just take a moment though to to talk about how cool pro vending is? Like just it <laughs> as a concept, just really neat. Okay, moving on. Yeah. So no. yeah, we're <clears throat> we're all gonna gather. We're gonna play a game of fling and flamo, and um, you know, very cleverly named. I just came up with that right now. Um, it's, 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 it's perfect. We love I like it. it. Um, and I would like Great to just it. do a a short scene of the two teams having a a friendly uh kind of ribbing back and forth right before the whistle blows um so hey you're gonna go down for the third year in a row and it ain't even gonna be hard you're all gonna catch on fire in the first five minutes <laughs> you haven't obviously heard about our secret weapon have you that I'm, a, <laughs> I'm a thief of course i've heard of your secret weapon we found it out already yeah, because we're smart. What's your secret weapon? Oops, I guess you forgot. <laughs> we don't need one. Never we have. We don't need to be secret weapons. We just, we're the weapon, okay? Um, and what exactly did you think our secret weapon was that you found? It's fair. What that I Obviously, found? Like... I mean, you know what it is. Why would I Why have would to tell you? you? Oh, I just wanted to make sure you got the right thing, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, we know all the things. Again, thieves, sneaky, we know all the things, okay? Yes. Anyway, I don't know why you think you're going to win. When is the last time you all won this? Like five Not years ago? Well, you know, I mean, I think there's a difference between winning and winning here. And, um, and what exactly is that? Well... We We've learned a lot about how you play the game. And as you say, sneaking is sneaking. And we are also sneaky. Yeah, so. whatever, 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 Trey. Okay, last time you tripped over your own shoelaces and lit your ass on fire. That was yeah. one time. Yeah. yeah, it was freaking hilarious. Great. Guess who had a thousand gold on him tripping and lighting his ass on fire in the third quarter. I mean, of course, ah, you. your own, your own teammate. <laughs> Why would you do you? that? Ah. Wait, wait, you made how much? Oh, I made 20 to one odds. <laughs> oh, that is a great, <laughs> oh, great <laughs> So tell me again about who's winning. I mean, Still us. I mean, still in us. The, in wait, wait, wait. Flamo, still we us. are still the best. You're not but betting against us today, are you? Umi? Yeah. Well, uh, couldn't say. <laughs> and <the> scene. <laughs> <laughs> it's sad when your own teammate. <laughs> Deception. Gotta make that money. Yeah, yeah. Betrayal. I mean, Flinging Flamo, the game. Very good. Love it. Only I want you to know that's, that uh, Lion King 2 song did not need to go as hard as it did. It really didn't. <laughs> it's so hard. It didn't need to go as hard as it did. I love it. All right. It's a great song. Who's next? It is uh, next. Oh, turn. criminy criminy. It's me. Um, all right, kids. Let's see oh. what we've got. Come here, you. Select move. Boink. Nine. Uh, Y'all are making up for those zeros you drew in the first round. Jeez. Yeah. We've drawn a single diamond. I don't think we've drawn a single diamond yet. So. This is a very wild. poor town. Uh, okay, <laughs> man, we are really existing in the past today. Yeah. Um, Living in the past, I wouldn't know anything about. Well, you know, in the past. our 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 town just has a lot of history that we have to really come up with on the spot. <laughs> I know. Um, okay, I am going to pick um, this strange building here. Ooh, it is a strange building. In the bottom, it's like it's got like a big lock on it. It does look like it has a big lock on it. Um, and what I'm going to say about this building is that um, it, <laughs> we're going to go way back, like, like, back, like back, a fucking back in the day, thousand years back, like, oh, no, girl, I want to go way back. Put on that Bobby Womack, you know what I'm talking about. 
Um, <laughs> what? Max, uh, I was saying we're in my way. <laughs> he continues uh, to do so to this day. So what what the building is, is um, currently it's very, very little more than a kind of mound of clay um, with a, basically a little dome of clay with a small little kind of patio outcropping, which is what forms that lock shape from above that what you're seeing at the bottom of the lock is kind of the building. And then that little rounded bit is the patio outcropping. And that's all it was. It's very simple, very, very kind of minimal. Um, and it sits on a very small plateau, maybe five, five, six feet up. A millennia ago, this was the first building built in this city. It was built by two young children, orphans, who were fleeing wild creatures. These kids were more bird than people, really. They were borderline, you know, feral. Um, and they found this kind of wet mud clay and this elevated spot where all these little, you know, where the creatures chasing them and wanting to nibble at them and eat them couldn't jump up. And they climbed up and they built this little mm. hut, a single entrance and a single exit. And what it became was kind of the hub over time, what it became was sort of the central hub for the town's kind of religious thinkers before the church was built, before the church became a large kind of ostentatious and grandiose institution with its own, you know, police police. Religion 500 years ago in this town was monastic, small. It was about the self. It was simple. It was about your own beliefs. And what people would do is they would come to this place and they would sit and they would think and they would leave. And it was open to all. And it was always accessible. And it was a place of safety and self-reflection. And so it was known as the safe house. And the inside is literally nothing. It's just same. It's just that clay mud around a kind of, you know, in that kind of domed shape. And you just sit in shadow or you can go out on the patio and sit in the sun. And that's all there was to it. Um, and now in the present day, it's sort of a forgotten thing. The church doesn't really deal with it or talk about it, but it still sits there. And every once in a while people come and they sit and they think and they use it especially those who kind of remember the old stories. But um, but it's sort of a forgotten place. Um, I think the scene I would like to do is probably not quite a thousand years ago, maybe at the end of these two children's lives, a few more people have shown up. Maybe this is beginning to be a, 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 a tiny little village, you know, a few things are cropping up around this place and they are close to the ends of their lives and they are sitting and they are reflecting on themselves and thinking about the hut and the safety that it is provided uh, to not only them, but then to create a community around. Are you groaning? Oh, I just see what could be here. So much more than what is. So much more than what was. But what it is. Yes. It is friendly. It is inviting. It is warm like a hug. Yes. It to think 
that you could build that purely out of need. It speaks well of us. I, d I wonder sometimes when I sit here, I wonder what it will say about us when we are gone. Oh. I hope nobody speaks of me after I am gone. Leave me to dust. Let me fly in the winds. That is a lovely thought. It is a lovely, a lovely belief. And I do, I do hope that is what happens to you. And you? What does the future hold for you? No matter what time of day or night, what season of the year that I come and I sit and I think, I have no answer. Mm. And it used to trouble me quite a bit. Why couldn't, why is this the one thing that being here in this place and leaving myself open to the world that it could not solve for me. But, but, is there not, is there not a beauty in not knowing? As long as I seek, I am alive. Yes. It is all that we are left is all that we can teach is that we know so little. <laughs> Indeed, but everything I know, I have learned right here. As to me. I think we have done we have done a good thing here. I, I really, I believe that. And that sets my heart at ease, makes it light and makes me feel like maybe I will fly after all. Not here. No, not here, but on the winds. Yes, we will fly together. I very much look forward to it. I think that's a nice scene. Yeah. That was lovely. All righty. It is my turn again. What card shall I draw? Will it be a diamond or yet another spade? <laughs> ah! we're, we're using the spades only deck, right? Jeez. Yes. <laughs> can, we, can we mulligan that? Just mulligan it. And is it another it. spade? No. Oh, oh, I yes. got a diamond. Yay. Yay. There's I, some financing going on in this town. <laughs> yeah, I am a three of diamonds. This building is being used for a financial purpose. Financial purpose. I think that this, uh, hmm, this is going to be, um, Hmm. Let's see. Financial purpose. I want to say that this is one of the many branches of this bank throughout the city. Like they have kind of a monopoly, <clears throat> but they have many, many different buildings. And this one particular building is kind of the most obscure uh, of the branches. It's not really well frequented. It's kind of out of the way, and most people don't really use it all that much. Like, we have some areas, like, that are sort of suburban and well-populated that have a bank. But um, my bank is going to be this building here. It is, there's really not much around it. Really, the only places that are using it might be, like, this area up here, if they feel like coming all the way down. But, yeah, it is, it is kind of an out-of-the-way lesser known branch of the city's bank. 
Um, the people who work there are bored to tears. They have little <laughs> to do um, except uh, it's basically keep this place from being robbed by the uh, the opportunistic thieves guild um, who see them as a, a easy target because they are kind of you know put away. Um, I want my scene to basically be in the break room of this bank. Uh, a couple of the clerks are talking over their lunch. Um, the topic is not, they can talk about whatever they like, but they're just shooting the shit. Water cooler sty like style conversation happening in this bank. Yes. And then she came over and told me that she already had an account and I knew she was lying. <laughs> As you do. Kicked her out immediately. Just as you would imagine. <laughs> well, I guess that I guess that's fairly entertaining. I mean, the last person that I, I clerked for um, took about ten minutes to to count about mm, like uh, five hundred small coins. Like uh, I hate small coins. I hate small... it when people do that. And they wanted to exchange them, of course, for the large coins. And, you know, that means I have to count it one more time because even though they've counted it in front of me, you know what the policy is. Like, I have to count it one more time. Did I they pull it out of a it... small baggie? Because I was in a sock. Oh, my gosh. It was 500 small coins in a sock. Why do they do that? Just go somewhere and like, I don't know. Why does they all have to be at once? Why do you want it all at once? That's my problem, you know? It's like, I don't, I don't know. Like, even if it were only a hundred small coins, it's still too many small coins. Why, why aren't you exchanging your small coins for, for large coins? Like, so it's just, uh, uh yeah. but that's like the most entertaining thing that's happened to me at work in the last I don't know, months? Yeah, yeah. You don't suppose that eventually they're going to shut us down, do you? Oh, no, no, no. Well, who the hell are we servicing? Uh, we're, we're servicing the people on East, like West Wing, up on the, the hill. All of those old folks up there, they need places to come. Uh, and maybe so they bring a year. Full of their small coins. Yeah. I mean, maybe I don't want to lose my job. I don't think we'll lose our job. No, no, we're fine. Maybe they transfer us to a, a livelier branch. I hear the one in the city center is hopping. Yeah. Not flying, no. obviously. But oh, it's I hear I hear they have bodyguards to block the thieves guilds people from breaking in. Yeah, Ooh. yeah. Like, do you know how much... How how much how good that is? I mean, every once in a while we get one of those like little deep guys who come in here and they just like try to like play a prank on us, but like they're not actually trying to steal from us. They're just trying to like you know keep us on our toes or something. I don't know. It's weird. But sorry, I can hear I can hear one of our elder managers calling me. Guess it's time to go back. Yes, so back to the boredom. Uh, 500 small coins. And I think that's where we're going to leave it. Yeah. yeah. Just thinking I about don't think I, I don't think coins that I described that like feet. No, you my, did not my give me that. feather or my bone. <laughs> so, uh, no, I was here. My last one, I forgot to like do most oh, of that part too. Yeah. Sorry. That's, so that's the, 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 I, I think that we fairly, I, I established the beak fairly well. It's like, this is a yeah. place that like people don't really come. It is out of the way. It is not convenient. <clears throat> the elders who come here come because it's out of the way and nobody else comes here. So they know that their service will happen like right away. There's like never lines. You know, old <laughs> with people, their 500 codes. Lines. Coins. With their 500 small coins. coins. Um, <laughs> The outside is simple. It is just a, like, it looks exactly like it does on the map. It's a flat square building, uh, basically made of clay, the same clay that molded the very first building, molds all of the, the rest of the buildings in this in this city, as far as I'm concerned. Um, and on the inside, it is Spartan. It is just, you know, 
a couple of booths that dispense coinery and like big coins, small coins, medium coins. That's the currency. Yeah, um, all baby. Yeah, I like that. It's it's not money. <laughs> it's just big coins, small coins, medium coins. <laughs> yep, everything's value is in big coins, small coins, and medium coins. Um, and like, uh, yeah, and and, and you know, it, it's just it's it's there to serve a function. That's all it does. And uh, yeah, that's it. That's the beef feather and the bone. All right, cool. Uh, I guess it's me. Uh, deal me my card. What Ooh. is it? It is a seven. Oh, I drew on it. I did not mean to do that. All right. Seven of clubs. Seven of clubs. It is oh. for a future purpose. A future purpose. What should we do? I don't know. I don't know why I'm doing that accent. I'm just having fun. Uh, why not? Why you're not? Allowed. I mean, you also me. don't forget I, to I, doodle in your uh, building. Oh, yes. Thank you for reminding yeah. me. Doodle, doodle, doodle. And, doodle. And Over here, number. instead, screwing around with the uh, with the cards to make them oh, all, man. all aligned. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Going doodle, doodle, doodle just made me think of, uh, of Trevor. A building Trevor. with a future purpose. It's a seven. Skeet up. Doop. Skeet up. Bad up. Just one of my very yeah, bad all right. favorite people. I'm going Daddy to do... check you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> these, the, these buildings here are are a part of the same complex, we will say. So they are <laughs> here. This is what is being set aside. It is the direct challenge to the elders building a very fancy nursery school. And so we have decided to speak with the farmers and they've allowed us to use some of their magic. And we are pulling our funds to build a brand new educational institution over here for the knowledge of young birds uh, with a very strict policy of, uh, where, I mean, the, we say it's to be fair to all people in the city that everyone can come and get their education here. Um, but some people in town say that they are being more selective against some groups than others. Uh, not that there are, there are a few elder families and maybe some families from the other two factions as well, the clerics, and maybe just like lots from all over the city, but especially the elders are very low in number here. Um, and so that is the B. Not as inclusive as you say you are. I mean, we say we are. I mean, this is how I feel at my job every day. I'm like, you're not as inclusive as you say you are. Uh, Me <laughs> also every day. Just cut that part out. Yeah. <laughs> Which is good take now. Uh, so... Describe the structure's appearance. On the outside, it is simple AF. It is like not supposed to be a fancy. Like it's the anti. Like it's the antithesis of everything that the like gaudy, flashy nursery place was. Like it's like kind of old. There's like big trees around it. It's very earthy. It's kind of like looks like muddy walls and like like. It's supposed to be as plain looking on the outside as it can be and on the inside as well. But the one thing that uh, is included in all of these mage places are a place to burn like special incense. Uh, like there are lots of like magic uh, incantations like written out on the wall and symbols all over the place, which if you really are against magic, maybe you wouldn't send your child here, but they are claiming to be very inclusive, but not as inclusive as they could be. It's, is the thing. And that's very evident because inside it's very mage heavy. It's very over like heavy handed. Um, and then the, yeah, that's the outside, the inside. Yep. Cool. 
Uh, the scene here is just going to be a teacher trying to get control of their class. It's a oh. class of like, oh yeah, oh yeah. It's just like random. Fucking war flashbacks. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Max is going to be our teacher. So. Oh, great. <laughs> Hey, hey. Stop! Give it back! No! Give it back! It's mine. Give it back I right it. now! No, it's pretty. I want to no, look at it for a little bit. Give it back to me! Dad, he took my he took my rock! I didn't give take me it my back. rock back! Throws it, ah! throws it at Amanda. It's just like <laughs> claws chalkboard. Oh. Hey, I didn't do anything. I was just trying to learn. Well, oh. here's a lesson. Not my Everybody fault. shuts yeah. it. Or everybody gets the claws. But she's not sharing. Oh. He tried to give me a tail. Mm. Oh. Ah. Ah. I'm going to tell my mom. Ah. <laughs> I'm going to tell my dad, too. Ah. My dad. Oh my, dad's, no. my dad's part of the reason we even have a school. He's part of the reason you have a job. So how about you don't do that? Or I'm going to tell him. And then he's going to get angry. And then you'll lose your job. How about Noted. that? And uh, I'm just going to turn these two children into badgers. <laughs> I'm a mage. I know how to do it. You're a badger, and now you're a badger. Huh? Oh, they're yeah. talking badgers, but they're badgers. Can we, hey, yeah, can we back. go back to the lesson? Can we go back to the lesson now? Sorry. Today's lesson. Listening to teacher. Oh. I can turn you all into badgers all day long. And no, I'm not going to lose my job. Because no, I don't work for your parents. I work for the Mages Guild, you fools. You unbelievable little bastards. Why are you yelling at me? I didn't do anything. Because the next lesson today, when your classmates irritate teacher, you have to get them in line, or you, you become mad. You're gonna turn her into a badger too. That's mean. You're 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 rude. How you. could I? How can I learn? I just want to learn. Your child. Third lesson. Hit that badger with a book. She, but hit that badger with a book. But but they're my friend. Hit your friend the badger with the book. Uh, <laughs> but why? Pick up that book. Are you? <laughs> this is part of the lesson. You'll see. I don't like it. Okay. Now hit the badger who's talking with the book. Uh, uh -huh. I don't... Oh, this is gonna hurt. Oh, ah! that was there brutal. Now when that badger talks, out of turn. You hit the badger with a book. <laughs> no, you can't talk. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! See, now you're learning. Sorry. That's what we're here to. <laughs> the school is <laughs> clearly Terrible. well run. Gonna succeed. <laughs> They're gonna succeed I, in I educating the mage mage youths. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you gotta hope, when you have magic powers. You got to put them in line. I okay. wish I could have turned unruly children Any into of badgers. my children into badgers. Oh, my God. <sighs> Hearing that, I was like, that would actually be amazing. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Badger. Uh, badger. Okay. That, thank you for the fun there. That was, that was amazing. It is your turn. I know. Oh. I, like, I was so caught up in listening to that that I did not think ahead very well. Um, I have the five of hearts, which I have put in a weird place. But I'm going to fix it. Nope. Nope. Farts. <laughs> no, Fart five noodles. of hearts. Farts. Hang on. No, I'm fixing it. There we I go. Can... Oh, okay, cool. um, so I'm going to have the five of hearts. So that is a social purpose. So I think this place right here called to me for some reason. Um, and it is the local hole in the wall. 
Ooh. Um, so I would say there's, uh, it's a bar. So there's, there's not, there's not a lot of wood in this, in this town. Um, it's very, uh, it's a lot of, you know, clay and stone and, and all of that kind of stuff. But, um, the bar is built of, is built from wood. Um, so it, it kind of stands out in a weird way. Um, it's, but it's very dark wood, um, kind of all around the L shape. And it just kind of, the wood sticks up. They're like planks. You can see them, right? Like two by fours, but, and they stick up past the top of the building, um, giving it just sort of this very weird shape on the outside. Um, it was kind of like someone got drunk and decided to build a bar building and just kind of got all the proportions wrong. <laughs> like, it's just, um, but you know, there, it was built by the, by thieves. It's a, it's a, it's a cover, you know, it kind of helps them launder their goods. Not, the, not the money, but it, it's kind of like, it's a bar slash there's a fence in the back, you know, like it's, it's, yeah. it's that kind of thing. Um, and that was, so when people talk about it, it, it doesn't tend to be, uh, frequented by you know the air quote upper levels of society but it's also not like a dreggy like you know kind of it's just somewhere it just kind of sits kind of in the middle it's like it was probably a pretty decent bar when it first opened now it's just kind of got a little bit of it's just got it's kind of starting to sag just a little bit but um we don't talk about the saggy bits you, yeah, we used to, they don't talk, nobody notices it because because everyone who's been there has been coming there for so long or their, or their older sister came or their, their dad came and they come to, it's a big old like hand-me-down tradition. Can't tell about the saggy bits because of the giant brassiere in the roof. <laughs> <laughs> da -dun. Um, we did so it. On the inside, uh, on the inside is one main bar on the longer end of that l-shaped building it's just it just goes very simple just a straight bar um the other side is uh technically like a dance space but no one ever uses it um there are just a couple of of small tables. little goblins uh just kidding a couple of like small uh square tables that kind of are haphazardly uh, pulled into where the um, dance floor would be. Um, and there are people who are sitting there having conversations over drinks. Um, two people are playing a game of chess on one of them. Um, and, you know, it's just got a nice, friendly, like, this is my neighborhood bar feel to it. Um, I go where, where everybody knows, knows your, your name. name. Yeah. Um, dun, dun, dun. Um, so the scene I would like to play is, let's see, I would like someone from out of, from out of town to have stumbled into the bar. Uh, I don't know what they're looking for, but I would say a stranger has stumbled into the bar and caught the attention of the bartender. Oh, oh my. Who's that? What a place. Um, bartender. Bartender, good sir. Bartender? Can anybody help me? Oh, uh, hi, hi. Um, yes. H how can I help you? Oh, I, I was wondering if you know the name of, uh, of Bernhardt. Bernhardt, I'm looking for a person named Bernhardt. They told me to meet them here. Are, are you sure here? I've never heard of someone named Bernhardt. Is that what you they, said? They, they said to me, come come to the ramshackle L-shaped bar. And that this looks ramshackle and L-shaped well, to me. This place is not called the ramshackle L-shaped bar. Um, So maybe you have the wrong place. And what, what is this place called? Oh, well, you know, to know that you have to buy a drink. Oh, I mean, I could buy a drink, except I was waylaid upon my my entrance into the city by a, a, a set of rather rather uh, ingenuous thieves. Um, which one? Which, 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 oh, I I think she's talking about Mark. Shit, that is awful. I can't believe someone would do that. Um, so, all right, you know what? Uh, here.
here. Have have one on on the house. Oh, I appreciate it. You know, my friend Bernhard said that this place was a real, a real nice place to have a drink. Uh, though apparently you let your dance floor go to waste. I think Mark already hawked their stuff in the back. Yeah. I don't suppose you know where I could uh, buy uh, a few things to replace what was taken from me by this gnarly thief. Oh, um, you mean, oh, they didn't take, they didn't there, take your money? Some, there's something suspicious about that. I, I mean, I don't have a lot of money, but you don't suppose that I carry all my money into the, in the same place when going to a brand new place. I'm smart. I definitely have other money hidden elsewhere upon me person. That's just the smart thing to do when you travel. Are you sure you don't know a burn heart? I, uh, I just, <laughs> uh, cannot, she just cannot read whatever sign language like thing you're trying to tell. And she's just like, <laughs> uh, uh, no, lady, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't know a Bernhard. I mean, you could ask around, you know, like, I don't know that one, that person over there. I haven't seen them far before. So maybe it's, I, I don't know. I just say like, I think it's really smart of you to keep your money somewhere else. Like, like I'm about to go on a trip too. like, where, where's the, can you give me some advice? Oh, I mean, there are certain places that not even thieves will try to get money from. I'm just saying. Uh, so here you would that, be surprised. Yeah, hearing that leans over to the barkeep and goes, "There's something off about this one. I think they might be trying to talk to the fence in the back. They seem to be knowing more than they this should know." It's not Bernhard. Yeah, but I'm, maybe they think it's some kind of code. I don't know. They're from out of town. They're weird. It's ridiculous. Know. Just just let them drink and leave them alone. This ale is really tasty. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I'm really glad that you enjoy it. I brew it myself. And I mean, no as, you're, as you're drinking a uh, ball. Oh, we lost. Like, we lost. Yeah, into yeah, into you as they walk that's by. Oh, no. <laughs> As you're drinking, a <laughs> slender bird person bumps into you as as oh, they walk my by. Like, oh, oh ter terribly sorry, terribly sorry. Oh, oh and, my and goodness! Like, kind of hey, sing, apologize to, bird to the like, lady. So so sorry. Okay, uh, okay. you know what? I'm, All right, I'm blind and drunk. Yeah, get out of here! Get out of here! Oh, I'll make sure yeah. you get yeah. you off for the evening. Uh, All right, well, uh, you know, just, and now that there's no mark. I, I guess it, enjoy your drink. I guess I got I gotta go help Thank my other you customers. Thank so much. Good luck. I really to you. appreciate your All service. Right. All right. Have a good one. You too. The end. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that. No, I, do, I have no idea what any of this was. And but it's cool. I just, I, just, I, to, I want to. I tried do the, to pick their pockets, but nothing. Yeah, they, they I have no idea. You don't back want to know. Trying to tell me. I was just like. <laughs> You don't want to know where they had the rest of their money. Oh, I, I yeah, no, I don't. <laughs> I'm good. Pocket dimension. Have you checked your butthole? <laughs> did, did it. <laughs> you up? Did, did it. That's so Have you quickly checked it? Evolved <laughs> into that. You need to watch this video, Randy. <laughs> just, just watch the video. <laughs> Got it will it. change your life, not necessarily for the better. You know what? You know what? For all of those people that I'm watching this with live <laughs> next week, I will have watched you this and video. You and you and you. You know about this video. You're my favorite. <laughs> you right there. You're my favorite. Um, question. So we have Max still. Should we do Max and then like yeah. wrap it up yeah. maybe yeah. and see yeah, like, where we right. are? Three yeah, each? let's do it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. we will have three Crazy. each. Yeah. I think I, I think I know which way the wind is blowing on this one. I'm fairly I got this. I got this. I'm going to be We're a big winner. See. Letting Max finish is going to be a winner, winner, chicken dinner. Yes. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> and nope. Uh, all right. It's not a spade. It's not a spade. <laughs> That's true. But it's, we, we literally drew one diamond with which I established I a monopoly of banks. I know. <laughs> You know, um, the cards, they just had other things in mind, you know? They had other plans. Other plans for us. Well, since I have to build a religious institutione, um, 
in I the mean, future, right? A future religious yeah, institution? Like a future purpose. So it doesn't like, like I made a school education for the future, right? Oh, I see. Yeah. Well, I'll say, let's just go big or go home. I'm going to choose big. this this big, my, my, my Coliseum. Yay. I guess I understand what you all were saying about it looking like a Coliseum. I was seeing what, um, what looks like it was going <laughs> in towards like a football field oh. was actually going up towards a, um, towards like, like a, a dome. dome. It could look, I thought way, it like was more like a synagogue, like a giant synagogue. Yeah. The, the, the best thing is that the perspective on this can switch depending on what you focus on. Yeah. Right. Uh, it's a classic. Uh, so cool thing about concave. let's, uh, what's we got a beak okay. feather and bone this thing right okay do the beak do the so beak do this the is beak. probably the tallest um building in town and it wasn't originally a religious institution um i would say that it was originally used for um probably for storage for food storage um that it was in the in the cold months in the winter months it was where the entire town's like farming economy would kind of put all of their grains and their fruits and they would do canning and they would do all of this stuff so that the whole town in a very kind of uh, socialized manner could get through the cold months together as the town grew and the economy obviously became more complex uh people became kind of much more self-sufficient but also much more selfish so the idea of these kind of uh communal food banks started to die out and this giant building got uh subsumed by the church and now exists as the barracks for the church's uh military arm um and i would say that although everyone in town knows that this is a giant fricking building full of like religious zealot warriors. <laughs> uh, nobody thinks about that fact. Nobody actively is like, oh yeah, there's just like a bajillion of these fricking Templars sitting around in this building. But they, they're aware of its existence, but I don't think they quite understand how many people it can house. Um, and it it will be where the church inevitably um, <clears throat> begins the takeover of of the city, or their attempted takeover of the city. That one day they their army will kind of pour out of this building and spread across the city and, and seize control. Oh boy! Um, at least that's the intent. Uh, at the moment. Uh, the scene that we can play as our final scene um, can be, I think, uh, an important moment of training for, uh, hey, let's bring it back to the 41st, the 41st Legion, um, who are sort of, you know, now an established uh, group, you know, the, they're, it's been many years since they took down the first thieves guild or claimed to have taken down the first thieves guild, but uh, you know, they're now, they're now known and they have some renown. So this is a training for the 41st um, and who will be kind of the first foray out into the <laughs> seedier parts of town when, when the operation uh, commences. Let's see. Uh, anyone feel like being like a, say, a drill sergeant of some sort or a commander of some sort? No. Uh, All right, damn it. I feel it. like this is your party, man. Yeah, man, we're just falling in line. Damn right you're falling in line. Snap to it. Oh, yes, sir. Listen to me. You're the 41st. You're the best out there. Yes, sir. Yep. This squad... Could go out there and set that city to rights. Yes, by sir. Itself. Yes, sir. Damn, right. Let me get a hooah. Hooah. Let me get a hooah. Hooah. Sorry. Okay. Number three. Unbelievable. 
I just, sir, I, I wonder if we are not, perhaps, if we perhaps are uh, wrong. <laughs> that is a treasonous thought. Don't Agreed. Say that. Wrong how? Should we not instead encourage people to um, think as individuals? That's exactly what we're doing, soldier. We are telling them, go, think, philosophize. Believe in the unknown. We are telling them to follow the precepts of our church. Flight, expanse, forward movement into the unexplored. What if they believe in something else? What else is there to believe in? Well, to, to hear that the mages talk of it, plenty of <coughs> other things. Mages. I just feel as though <laughs> the suppression of, of <sighs> other people's beliefs may be morally and inherently, her, inherently wrong, sir. I, mm -hmm. I, I find myself questioning uh, whether or not uh, we are, are, uh, are not perpetuating some sort of terrible i mean the elders do it and the mages do it why can't we be better it is not our job to think sir they don't speak for all of us sir it's not our job to think it is our job to carry out the will of the church that is exactly right soldier it Thank you, is sir. our job to carry out the will of the church and the will of the church is chaos the church does not teach you to think one way Church teaches you to look from a higher vantage to understand that below you is chaos. To analyze it, to learn from it, to ask those questions. To learn Have to you fly. ever heard a cleric answer a question? Uh, no. And that, soldier, is why you'll never be a cleric. You just answered my question. I, I. That was very clever, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I resent the implication that I could not be a, a fully functioning cleric, sir. Hmm. And why do you think you should be a cleric? Because I believe people deserve to know the truth. Once again, the truth. you have answered a question. Unbelievable. The truth about what? that we don't know what we are capable of. Perhaps we will never be able to fly, but that is just, that is just a, 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 a confine of, of the bodies we were born in. Our minds are capable of so much more. Sir, would you like me to gut her with my sword for insubordination? Hmm. No, do not gut them with your sword for insubordination, but do do this for me. You said do do, sir. Yes, I did. For it, we will laugh. Everybody laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. Thank you. You, soldier number three, will be made an example of. You will be taken to the clerics. You will be taught to be a cleric. You will think like a cleric. You will teach people like a cleric. And in time, you will become a cleric. Okay. This is what happens when you ask questions. Uh, you showed them right, you, sir. You get what you want? Exactly. And we are going to go out there and we are going to put our boots on their necks until they ask questions. Until they demand chaos. I swear we'll kill every single one of them if they don't try and make a mess of this place. Sir, yes, sir. Exactly. Sir, yes, sir. I love making a mess, sir. Me too. I'm making I'm a mess of everything. Confused, My mom sir. says so. I would like to help people bring order to their lives if they so choose. Unbelievable. I can stab. Excellent. Do me a favor. Non-lethally stab soldier number three. Ow! In the shoulder. Just right here. Soldier number three. What's going to happen to that wound? Hopefully, it will get treated by a doctor. Possibly not, though. Chaos. 
get infected and it might turn like black and fall off. Definitely you don't know. Possibly. Or it could heal totally fine. Or it could like, be right. fine and it will not bleed too much and you'll but be you fine. Know. And go home. That's also chaos, sir. These right? are the precepts of our belief. Flight, the winds, chaos, number three. Now, Get yourself up to the church. Start studying how to be a cleric. If you're lucky, your arm won't be infected, and you'll live through the week. And it won't fall off. Good luck. This is madness. <laughs> Bye. Bye. We're we won't miss you. Bye. Best of luck, <laughs> sir. Sir. Yes. Can we do more drills? Absolutely. Excellent. Let me get a hua. 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 The strangest drill sergeant I've ever met, but I loved it. Pretty right. much All right. where we're at. All right. I believe it is now time to sum up our uh, total up our cards. I have yeah. some totals here. I def I counted them. Okay. Did you count them too though, Randy? I don't want to I, I did, but I would love to double check and make sure mine are correct. So I have Max with twelve, myself with thirteen. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, I have Aki with 15 and Randy with 16. Barely. So, <laughs> yeah. so the mages, the mages control the seat of power in this land over Ugh. here up in this corner, right here. Yeah, I Must mean, all that barely, chaos. Barely, it's barely. Yeah, you've so, barely taken control, just barely. It's so close. So what I will say is that this place. Uh, over here, uh, surrounded by the Thieves Guild, which is never a good place to be, uh, <laughs> but uh, is going to be our new uh, practice ground for our magic. So it looks like sort of like a like it's kind of mountain, like it's almost like a jagged mountainy kind of thing to me. And so I imagine that it's just like this mount, like this, it's not a mountain like giant, but it's kind of like a small little mountain with like little caves and you can like go in and out and there's like all these tunnels. Arena. It's kind of like a, yeah, it's kind of like a giant paintball arena in, in a way, but really what it is, is it's a training ground for all of like the mages who have been given uh, access, like the ability to use all of their magic. It's got rooms for the highest up in the order to like really like study and, and practice their art. But sitting in one of the rooms is uh, Lightfoot Thin Whistle. Uh, and, and before we get back to that, I will say, so the beak is uh, that a lot of people, th this building is recently taken over by the mages, okay? It was sort of where the council sat themselves uh, for a very long time, and the mages only barely got to take control of it with their deals with the the farmers guild, right? Okay. Like they leveraged all of their political capital to get some extra votes in, so that they could get their people to take over the space. Um, the outs, uh, and so the the people around the town talk about this place that it's loud. It's kind of like all hours of the night, you'll hear random like explosions of a spell or something you'll hear like the howl of wolves like if you live really close to this place it can probably be super terrifying um but what they also say is that they are helping to keep uh like the religious order which sounds like it's trying to gain more traction in the city they are actively working to stop that and that's how they've maintained power uh, the outside of the building, like I said, is all of those things, uh, but it's it's very big. It's very tall is the one thing I would add to that. And then the inside of the building is just way bigger than it looks on the uh, outside. Like, it's just full of rooms and caverns and, like, study offices and studies and, and just – you walk in and you're sort of surprised. It's like uh, – the phone booth in uh, <laughs> Doctor Who. <laughs> yeah, it's the TARDIS. The TARDIS. Yeah. yeah. Uh, smaller on the outside. <laughs> smaller on the outside, yeah. Uh, so, uh, sitting at his desk is a uh, 
is Lightfoot Thin Whistle. And he wears the pins of status for someone who has risen up through the ranks of the Mage's Order. He is uh, listening as... Like someone has, I don't want to play this scene because I, I know it's almost time for you to go. But what I will say is that right before he sits in this office, someone has come into the room and said, you know, that they've heard mutterings that the um, the cleric guild is the regiment itself is is planning on like making some moves soon. They're planning on causing some chaos uh, <laughs> of some kind, uh, but his mages are already deployed. And ready to go. And he sits there and he holds a missive from a parent. um, And he reads it. And the missive just says, uh, basically, I'm not much longer for this world. I know that my beliefs have never been yours and that you've never shared the same ideals that I have. I see that you made much of yourself in these coming years and that you argue with a lot of the things I I know to be true. But when I go, let me fly in the winds and remember me for all of the good that I did. The life that I gave you, which allowed you to be where you sit today. And remember that not all who hold these beliefs believe in reigning chaos among us. Some of us just want to fly. And that's where we'll end. Yay! Aww. It was a good story. And a very cool city. <laughs> thank you so much for facilitating that for us, Randy. That was yeah. lovely. <laughs> and I want to thank, of course, everybody who is currently viewing in chat for your support this season. We really enjoyed having you along the ride with us. Um, uh, and of course, we want to thank Dom, without whom none of this is possible. His dedication okay. to producing content on this channel uh, is unparalleled. He is the most lovely person, so make sure to give him some love in chat as well. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start doing our sign-offs. But before we do that, I just want to remind you that tomorrow uh, we do have um, Dark Alliance with Dom, Drac, Eric, and Bill. And that'll be at 1 p.m. Pacific. And of course, join us on Sunday for New Pantheon, um, which will uh probably be fun there are a few pretty decent people on that show <laughs> I, I i i think it's i think it's okay you know it's it's pretty cool definitely come check out new pantheon too that it's 4 p.m pt uh on this channel um let's go ahead and uh close it out let's uh let's start with max max tell everybody who you is where you be what you do hey everybody it's me max isaacson professional life ruiner t-shirt inhabitant and denizen of the internet. You know what? Yeah, here, let's do this proper. Hold on. Hi, everybody. It's me, Max Isaacson. <laughs> I'm here living on this t-shirt, just having a great time, thinking about saying goodbye to everybody and how much I'm going to miss all my friends here at All Games No Masters. It's real sad these days. Because I'm just going to be alone, stuck in a washing machine or laundry bin. Maybe I'll be rolled up and shoved inside a drawer. Who knows? Maybe, if I'm real lucky, I'll get outside. And a giant version of me will sweat all inside me and make me smell like a human boy. Bro. Pleasure, everybody. Brosismovies on Twitter.com. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I love the oh, end. Chef's so Deeply unnecessary and wonderful. All right, um, Randy, tell tell them who you is, where you be, what you do. Hey, I'm, uh, I'm Randy Alvarenga. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Rollaraja. That's R O L L E R R A J A. Uh, I'm also on Instagram at R A J A zero twelve. You know, just gotta add that one. And uh, on August tenth, you can catch me on the Dat Network uh, for a brand new show called uh, Harbingers. We're doing our first season of that. Let me tell you, I just heard the music, the like the theme song for it. It's sick. You have to join. <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> Amanda, who you is, where you be, what you do. Hello. Um, I am Amanda Powers. Um, you can find me mostly on Twitter uh, at Geek Powers. 
Um, and I do not have anything else for, to promote, but you know, sometimes I just pop up in random places. So who knows? You might be watching a show and then it'll be like, yo, here's Amanda. I don't know. That just kind of happens. That's just kind of how it happens. Aki came up to me and was like, hey, you just want to be like, we're in a show now. It's like, yeah, that sounds fun. So yeah, it's been pretty great. Who knows? And yeah. And of course, I'm Aki. You can find me on Twitter at Mixed Genie in a Bottle. That's M X G I N I I N A B O T T L E. My entire schedule can be found on my personal Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Shidari Aki. That's S H I D A R E A K I. Um, very excited because I think soon, but not this week, soon I'll be able to tell people when they'll be able to catch the season premiere of season two of let's get mild mount uh tune into new pantheon that's probably where we'll announce it if we're able to announce it so yeah i'm very excited remember you do not need a game master to play tabletop rpgs uh you don't even need these sick cool shirts though you know they don't hurt um but we know you you, want them. <laughs> you just need a really cool GMless game, a group of some of your very favorite people, your imaginations, and the desire to explore. So everyone, I hope uh, these last two seasons of uh, All Games and Masters gave you uh, the courage to try something different and new in your TTRPG uh, environment. Um, please let us know if you try any of these games. Um, tweet at us, uh, show us, show us how you, how you, uh, got together with your and, friends yeah thank you for learning with us you know thank Thanks. you for learning with us thank you for watching us play um it's been a real good time and we and we all i know thank aki for uh coming up with this together and producing it and and, and inviting us to join um what good idea yes very good idea so thank you very much this has been a joy i love you all and thank you all for watching thank you all Hopefully this isn't the last you've seen of us, so stay tuned. Bye. Uh -oh. Good night. Bye. Visibility spells kicking in. <laughs> Bye.